What's up subscribers? I was originally going to do this video on the Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid Derby, but ultimately decided that the second group stage in the Champions League for Real Madrid had a lot more weight to it. And what exactly happened to Real Madrid in their game against Club Brugge? We're going to be answering that question in this video and we have a lot to discuss, so stay tuned. Just before that though, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our future videos. Like the video as it helps support the channel and share this video with a friend. Without further ado, let's get started. As always, we'll start things off by breaking down how each team lined up and see all of the players involved. Starting with the home team, Real Madrid primarily lined up in their usual 4-3-3 and was made up of the following players. As for the visitors, on paper, Club Brugge lined up in a 3-1-4-2 and consisted of the following. As for the final result, the game ultimately ended 2-2 with Real Madrid needing a second half rally in order to get the draw. Having a quick look at the stats, we can get a visual of how the game went just by looking at the percentage of possession with Real Madrid in control of the ball nearly three-fourths of the time. And yet, even with this possession, Club Brugge was able to get two past them. How did this happen? Well, let's have a look, shall we? First things first, I want to have an exact definition of the word hubris. Here we can see that hubris is defined as excessive pride or self-confidence. And this is a word that fits Real Madrid perfectly in this game. Real Madrid was simply too arrogant, too cocky, too prideful going into this game. And this was clear just by looking at the body language of the players. The biggest problem though is that this hubris was shown more by the veteran players. And we can see that based on the two goals. For example, Ramos was the one who was responsible for the first goal, and Modric was the one who was responsible for losing possession, which ultimately led to Club Brugge's second goal. Now, to be fair, Modric did just get back from an injury, but this lackadaisical passing is becoming way too frequent in this team, and it is definitely costing them. Specifically, it cost them the two goals in the first half. But I do have to give props to Dennis Bonaventure, who took two shots in the first half and converted both of those. Any team is going to struggle against a player with that sort of efficiency, even if it is a European powerhouse like Real Madrid. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the goals. Having a look at the first one, we can see here that it was Ramos who was too lax with his attempt at the offside trap. Bonaventure did have some good luck here though. It seemed he had hit the ball incorrectly, but it seemed to bounce off of his other foot and then went in. But it definitely helped that Dennis had a flailing Courtois in front of him. Definitely not the best look for Courtois, but his night was not over yet. As for the second goal by Dennis Bonaventure, we see here that Modric was the one who lost possession for Real Madrid. And having a look at the goal, I honestly cannot tell if Bonaventure is insanely lucky or if he's a genius, because I could have sworn he was about to fall here, only for him to be able to get back his footing and get this brilliant shot off. And man, that Ronaldo celebration at the Bernabeu with the second goal of the game, ooh, that was just salt in the wound for Real Madrid. But maybe this is what they needed because Real Madrid came back with a vengeance in the second half. Having a look at the goal that made the score two to one, we see it was Ramos who redeemed himself with the start of the comeback. It did have to go to VAR, so it was nerve-wracking for a moment there, but it was correctly ruled as a goal, and the comeback was on. As for the final goal of the game, it was actually set up by a chain of events. Here we can see a tackle by Vormer on Vinicius Jr., which resulted in his second yellow card of the game. Therefore, he was given a red card, and Club Brugge was down to 10 men. From this free kick, which came from the tackle by Vormer, we got Real Madrid's second goal, courtesy of Casemiro, with a brilliant header five minutes from the end of regulation time. 
Real Madrid were not able to complete the comeback though, more due to a lack of time than anything else. Now let's discuss the aftermath of this game. But I do just want to take a step back and say I thought Real Madrid was on the right path again because in their three prior games, they only allowed a total of one shot on target. And this was against top tier competition. This was against teams like Sevilla and Atletico de Madrid. However, all of that changed as soon as they went back into the Champions League. Is this a case of the veteran players just not trying hard enough, saying, oh, we've already won that three times, we have nothing else to prove? Or is it just that they went into the game way too arrogant and didn't take their opponent seriously? I also want to talk about one of the two substitutions that was made at halftime because it had huge ramifications for the team. Courtois was subbed off at halftime due to his poor performance in the first half. But I have seen reports since then that Courtois has actually been diagnosed with anxiety and he was actually having stomach issues when he was subbed off in the dressing room. So I just want to point out that being a professional goalkeeper is stress and anxiety inducing as it is. But being Real Madrid's goalkeeper is on a whole nother level. So I actually feel for Courtois and I hope he gets the treatment that he needs in order to get better. As for the team though, I think Ariola will be okay if he has to step in for Courtois for a little while. He showed great confidence in Real Madrid's game against Osasuna a few weeks back and he also denied Denis Bonaventure's hat trick in the second half of the Club Brug game. So I think Real Madrid will be fine. Again, it's kind of hard to tell right now. Maybe Courtois just had an anxiety attack and he just needs some time off. I don't know what Zidane has in mind, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this all plays out in the next couple of weeks. And as for Real Madrid in the Champions League, they are tied with Galatasaray in their group with one point. Club Brug has two points ahead of them in second place, and PSG has been completely dominant in the group, winning both of their first two games, so leading the group with six points. As far as if I think Real Madrid will be able to get out of the group stage, I know they've been playing sort of terrible, but I honestly just don't see Real Madrid not leaving the group stage. I think they're going to get it back together in time. Maybe they're not going to beat PSG because it's going to take a massive fall from grace for them to lose that top spot. But I definitely just go ahead and make my prediction that Real Madrid will be second in the group in order to advance to the next round. But if you have any comments, concerns, or violent outbursts of disagreements, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Yes, thank you so much to everybody. Is this a spider? It is a spider. Go away. You're ruining my shot. <laughs> so there we have it guys. Thank you so much to everybody who's made it until the end of the video as always. I know some of you guys really aren't into the tactics, you just kind of want to know the news or how everything went or just what I think about the team in general. So I will continue to mix it up in the future for all of my subscribers. And as for Real Madrid's next game, they actually play on Saturday against Granada who is currently second in the table right now. So it's going to be a great game and it's going to be interesting to see how Zidane reacts to some of his key players underperforming and to see if Real Madrid is able to hold on to the top of the table because if they play the way they did against Club Brug, that's not going to be the case. <laughs> also random here, but for my gamers, how many of y'all have played FIFA 20 already? I know I've been playing all week, so I'd love to get some comments down below of what y'all think about the game. As always, follow us on Twitter at VCFootball3 so you don't miss out on any polls or any major news regarding the channel, including giveaways because I think YouTube did away with their messages. So all giveaway winners will be contacted through there now. As always, I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.